everyone. Welcome back to our another episode of Globe Talks with Traders, where you can learn ins and outs of the crypto trading. I am the host Starlight, and today I'm excited to have Abraham, the co-founder of Dexterity Capital, to join our channel. And go check out the videos to find out what his insights and thoughts about the crypto trading. Let's jump into the videos. Thank you, Abraham Chebi, for coming to our、um, channel today. And so, for the first question, I would like to ask is, can you share with us a bit about yourself and how did you your begin your trading in crypto? Yeah, sure.、Um, so it's really good to be here.、Uh, thank you for having me.、Um, I guess、uh, my story is that、uh, you know I graduated back in 2014. I went to work for a small consulting firm in、uh, in Boston. Then I moved to the West Coast to work at a startup where I actually met my.、Uh, My co-founder, who I still work with、uh, today, and together, you know, we we jumped into crypto.、Um, originally, we were working on、uh, a listing website for ICOs.、Um, then we began、uh, working on decentralized、um, arbitrage in、uh, in Ethereum,、uh, and this was back at the time when Ether Delta and Bancor were popular.、Um, we were writing these、um, MEV, essentially MEV bots, back you know back in、uh, 2018. And、uh, from there, you know, we we began、uh, more of a high frequency trading、um, system, and and we became active on exchanges like、uh, Binance, Coinbase, etc. And、uh, that's how we got here today. So we built up the company,、um, and、uh, you know, brought on a brought on a bigger team, and began trading a lot more assets, perpetual swaps, spot、uh, futures, that sort of thing. Yeah, I guess that's that's sort of the story. Oh, that sounds so interesting. How you guys、uh, start to、um, dive into the crypto journey? Okay. Um. So, um. Can you share with us、uh, what does、um, Dexterity Capital do, and what is your goal and mission at your company? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Dexterity Capital is a high frequency trading firm specializing in cryptocurrency assets. Um. We're set up as a proprietary trading firm. We're not a hedge fund, so we don't take outside the、uh, outside capital. And、uh, yeah, and so what is our goal? Our goal is to provide liquidity in global markets for、uh, cryptocurrency derivatives and、uh, spot trading.、Um, this is, it turns out, surprisingly challenging. The exchanges are located all over the world. They each have their own API,、um, and、uh, it's it's very exciting. So you know, we have a team of people writing software to figure out how to price different assets、uh, all the time. Crypto is twenty four seven, so that's of course uh, uh, not trivial and. Um, and at the same time, we also do some venture investments in、uh, companies that we feel are aligned or that we have synergies with.、Um, and, and you know, we're very excited about several of these.、Um, of course, the market's cooled a little bit, but it's still something that we think is a is a is a big opportunity to build、uh, to build new trading infrastructure in in crypto, especially in DeFi. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Compare your competitor. Like, can you share with us、uh, what have you done to enhance your company's trading system? What made you stand out? So, I, I think every company has their own approach to.、Um, To、um, development, some trading firms, you know, for, in the in the HFT space, some trading firms focus a lot on、uh, on being smart. Some firms focus a lot on being fast. Some firms focus a lot on having access to all the different liquidity pools.、Um, I'd say that we, you know, we our team is primarily engineers from the West Coast. We work really hard on building our, you know, on, on building this as an engineering system that takes in a lot of data very quickly and is able to make decisions、um, on venues that are in different parts of the world.、Um, Quickly, so I think that you know over the years our systems have really changed a lot. It's been a lot of fun to watch, you know. But、um, let's let's see, like a like a small example would be that、um, you know we we have our own、uh, low latency communication protocol that we use between different regions.、Um, so so when we send a message from one region to another region, you know we're doing it over rather than using TCP, we'll use a different protocol so that we can get our messages there faster. That's just one fun example of something you know something that comes up as you're developing these systems. Would you like to share with us like your reasons, a milestone you guys made so far? Sure. So, so we're a prop trading firm, so we we obviously don't share、um, things like our our PNL or our, or our performance. But、um, some of some of the numbers that we're okay with sharing are around、um, uh, volume. So you know we、uh, we we trade rather a lot in in dollar terms of of assets every day, and so this is in the you know this is kind of in the billions of dollars、uh, range, and we're really excited about this because you have to build your systems in a particular、mm-hmm. way to be able to handle. You know, tens or hundreds of thousands of trades a day, and and uh, and uh, getting that kind of turnover. So I think that's a big one. And then, and then another one is that we've really integrated with a lot of exchanges,、um, especially you know over the last couple of months. You know, as、uh, so 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 a big milestone there, I think, would be getting、um, getting live on 
you know, several, several new exchanges um, and new, new products. I think we trade in the hundreds, uh, the hundreds of products right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. So most of people that are really excited and are really curious about how the traders uh, trading day look like, do you mind to share a bit as well? Sure. Yeah, so um, I, I think one of the uh, one of the important things to realize is that as a professional trader, you spend a lot of your time uh, trading and dealing with all kinds of things. It's not it's not just finding some um, fancy math equation and then you just turn it on and it makes money. There's there's a lot of moving pieces that you have to deal with. Um, so I think the first thing to know is that it's important to really love what you're doing because you have to get into the weeds. Um, and then I think in terms of what what does a day to day look like? I mean. Uh, I write code every day. I, I love writing <laughs> software. So, you know, that's a big part of this. And and I think uh, people on our team, that's the day-to-day -day involves writing a lot mm -hmm. of code. Um, debugging exchange integrations is a big one. So something will go wrong. There'll be some errors or something weird will happen. You have to deal with that. Um, sometimes you have to, you know, if you're building mm -hmm. a new integration, you have to set up the account, go through KYC, deposit some money so you can test buying and selling. Um, some days something weird will happen with AWS or with another one of the cloud providers and you have to go debug that. Um, okay, so some days you're working on a new strategy. So you're trying to come up with ideas. You're on the whiteboard a lot with people talking. Um, that's a lot of fun. That's that's probably the, the most exciting part of the job. Uh, some days you're dealing with, uh, let's see an example, like the Solana network uh, goes down and mm -hmm. uh, your, tra your, your, your transfer is stuck. So you can't move money from one exchange to another one. So you have to figure out a solution for that. Um, you have to deal with your, um, you, you, you have to deal with rebalancing accounts. So if you have some money on Binance, some money on Wobi, some money on OKX, you, you maybe have to move some money around. So, um, that requires a little bit of caution because these are large, you know, large amounts that you're moving. You have to make sure they get from point A to point B, that they get there quickly and that nothing goes wrong in the, in the interim. Mm -hmm. So for the next question is how did you solve the technology and a security concern for uh, cryptocurrencies? Got it. Yeah, so um, so I think those are the two different questions there. So um, technology, maybe we can we can go with first. Um, and technology is actually interesting in in crypto um, markets in particular because a lot of the protocols that you use are not um, are not things that you would have to use in in traditional markets. For example, in trading equities or trading on CME. Um, so easy example of that is you use a lot of REST and WebSocket APIs to trade. Some some exchanges have fixed, but for the most part, if you're dealing with sort of the the mid to long tail of crypto exchanges, you'll be dealing with REST and, and WebSockets. And so there are a lot of uh, odd things that you have to think about when you're doing this. So for example, for WebSockets, should you multiplex or not multiplex? Um, for, web, uh, for, REST, you know, for, for, for REST interfaces when you're placing orders, should you use HTTP2 or HTTP1? Um, there's a lot of like little nitty gritty networking mm -hmm. questions that you have to think about. So you know, I don't think that we've solved the technology problems by any, by any means, but you know, we've made a lot of progress in learning about a lot of the quirky little things about how crypto exchanges work. And it turns out that after you've dealt with a lot of them, they start to look pretty similar. So you can recognize patterns and be like, oh, this exchange is like this exchange. So we have to think about this particular trick or this particular idea that we found there that, that worked really well. Um, yeah, so I think that's the technology part. And then the security part, look, I mean, security in crypto, for anybody who's listening to this, of course, it's, it's hard. You have to be very careful. There are people who are trying to um, you know, threaten your physical safety. There are people who are going after your your corporate network, trying to find a way in, trying to use social engineering attacks to get to your to get to your team. Um, there's a lot of money on the line. You have to be very careful. Um, mm -hmm. You have to always be vigilant. You know, check emails, um, check who they came from. Don't click on uh, links. Um, you know, think about your physical security. Don't tell too many people where you're going. Um, yeah, it's a uh, just like any other business where you're dealing with uh, money on a day-to-day -day basis, I think you just have to be, um, you have to be careful. You have to have multiple checks, use multi-sigs. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a part of the life, right? Yeah, that's true. How did you tackle when valuations or uh, volus extreme chance uh, were unexpected? Yep. Um, uh, so I think one thing I can, one thing I can say here um, is that um, no matter you know, no matter who you are, um, even if you have a strong thesis about the market that you think it's going to go down or it's going to go up, you never know. You never really know when it's going to happen. So high frequency trading systems make predictions that are maybe seconds, maybe minutes if you're if you're kind of mm -hmm. really good out into the into the future. But you really don't know what's going to happen an hour or a day from now. So for us, when when something crazy happens, when somebody sells 10,000 bitcoins on the market and the volumes go crazy or um, you know, or, or Luna or Luna is happening or something like that. Um, that it's 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 unexpected. So um, it's not like 
It's not like we're sitting here with some magic eye that tells us what's going to happen. And then what do you do when volumes change a lot? I mean, really for us, we run automated uh, tr trading systems. So we just basically need to make sure that our code is going to work the same way if we trade $100 versus $1,000 versus $100 million. In some periods, you get a one or 10 minute period where you know, you're know you going to trade hundreds of millions of dollars. And so you want to be sure that you know every possible failure mode and make sure that they don't happen then. Because if they happen right then, it'll be... You know, it'll be really bad. <laughs> Would you see yourself as a risky ever traders? And how did you handle risk? Uh, I, I think I would describe our team as very, very risk averse. And in general, when you're talking to HFT um, or algorithmic traders, that, that tends to be um, that tends to be the case. And what what does that mean? Um, that means that we try to um, we try to make bets where our probability of winning is is very high, and then we try to make you know if if, if we can. But of course, in, in the market, it's very hard to make bets where you're going to have a 99% win rate. So instead, what you try to do is you try to make many small bets so that you can extract your extracted value with a lower standard deviation. Um, what it means in practice is that if you're writing high-frequency trading code, you pretty much are, you know, by nature, kind of risk averse. And so I, I think we definitely are. Um, I think we definitely fit that, that description. And in terms of how we handle risk, I mean, you always, you always want to think hard about the trade-offs that you're making. So... Um, you know, what does the upside look like? What does the downside look like? Um, think, you know, we think a lot about the worst case scenario. Um, and then when you're, you know, if you're, if, for example, um, let, let me give you just one example. Like if you're, um, if you're writing a strategy that makes predictions, I don't know about the, um, the next 10 minute price of a coin, I don't know, so some coin that you like, uh, it could be Ethereum, let's say, maybe you think Ethereum is going to go up, but what you look at is, uh, over the past one year, if you look at your prediction, it's very variable. It, it has sort of like mm -hmm. a big uh, spread. Sometimes you're right, and sometimes you're um, very wrong. And you know the mean is positive, but on average, uh, but but um, the distribution is quite wide. So what you might do if you're if you think about this from an algorithmic perspective is to say, well, listen, instead of betting on the price of Ethereum against USD, which is very volatile, maybe I want to make short-term bets on the price of Ethereum, but I want to hedge out the correlation to Bitcoin, so that even if, if Bitcoin does something I'm not expecting. I can still extract my uh, my alpha on the Ethereum bet. So that's that's one example of how you might think about um, risk as you're building kind of predictive uh, predictive signals. So you already said uh, you and your team as a uh, risk ever traders about today's situations. How do you deal with the bear market and how to prosper in bear market? In your opinion as well. Yep. Yeah. So um, I think a lot of uh, I think a lot of um, directional traders and directional traders are traders who are taking a um, have an opinion about the kind of big big flows of the market. So they'll say, for example, I think Bitcoin is going to go up. I think what you find is that a lot of the crowd that was very long is unhappy in a bear market. Obviously, prices are low. Like this isn't a hard one. Um, a lot of the um, a lot of the market makers, a lot of the high frequency traders, you know, they come to the market and they're trying to make very small high confidence bets and to make a lot of them. So for us, what we really care about is uh, things like volume, things like volatility, um, retail. You know, is is a pretty big one if you're running a, um, if you're if you're running high frequency trading or, or algorithmic strategies. Retail tends to help a lot. Um, so uh, you know, I think for us, it's not so much like um, that the prices are low, which is um, mm -hmm. which is what what we're thinking about. It's a lot more that um, volumes, you know, tend to be pretty depressed in in times of uh, in in bear markets and. Um, and there tends to be less retail. A lot of retail lost a lot of money recently, obviously. And, you know, that, that uh, tends to result in kind of periods where they're not as active in the markets. If you have friends who, you, you know, you talk to, I'm, I'm sure you've heard a little bit less of them saying, I'm buying Bitcoin right now, or I turned off my dollar cost averaging purchase, something like that. You know, you, when you hear a lot of that stuff, it, it tends to be a sign that people are less engaged uh, in the market. And mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think for us, I mean, as a you know, we're we're market neutral, we're high frequency. What we really like is we like to be able to make a lot of bets all over the place. We like to be active on lots of venues, and we like to have um, you know volume, volatility, and uh, retail excitement. The final question is: If there are some newbie traders uh, who are going to dive into the crypto world, uh, what would you suggest they look out for? I mean, any tips for them before they are diving? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think. Look, I like, you know, as I'm sure, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, like I love trading. Um, this is what I do every day. And I, I am very excited about it and have a kind of a lot of time spent uh, staring at the game. The, the most important thing that I would suggest for people who are thinking about getting into this market is know why you're doing it. Think really hard and write it down. Are you coming to crypto to gamble? 
is this like a casino for you? Are you thinking about it like instead of going to Vegas, you're going to gamble on some cryptocurrencies? Or are you coming here to try to make long-term investments? Are you coming here to try to build high-frequency trading strategies? Know your purpose because it's really very easy in trading to fail to meet your purpose and then to change your purpose. So a common example would be you come up with a theory that Bitcoin is going to go up in the next 10 minutes because you have some signals or whatever. You think Elon is going to buy Bitcoin, whatever it is. Um, then you buy Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin goes down. And 10 minutes later, you look at it and you say, well, I changed my mind. I'm actually a long-term investor. I'm going to hold on to my Bitcoin for five years. That's not where you want to be. You want to know what your purpose is and you want to make sure that everything that you do is aligned with your purpose. I think that's the most important lesson in, in, uh, in trading and it'll protect you from a lot of the downside. If you show up to gamble, well, everybody knows that you should limit how much money you gamble. You don't go to Vegas with all of, you know, with a mortgage on your house. You, you just don't, right? So what is your uh, purpose? Yeah, I mean, for me, a big part of this is, uh, is playing the game. You know, I, I, I love writing trading code. I love, you know, I, I, I'm really excited about our team. We get to work together to solve problems. And, and a big part of this uh, high-frequency algorithmic trading world is mm -hmm. you're, um, you're competing with other very smart, very skilled people. It's, it's, it's like a game, you know? It's like some people wake up and they play StarCraft. And when you're running, you know, when you're, when you're playing at the top levels of, uh, of the trading game, it's, it's very similar. You're trying to figure out what strategies are other players using? Um, is there some way that you can work around them? Um, is there some trick that you can use in the market to be faster or to be smarter? Is there some... Um, you know, knobs that you can dial to make your system. Yeah. So I think like that's the <laughs> joint environment, the trading environment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Thank you guys for watching today's episode. If you like the content, please like the videos, leave your comment down below and subscribe our channel. And thank you Abraham to coming to our channel as well. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.